Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a very recent discovery of some of the first light in the universe, but more specifically the so-called cosmic makeover. Essentially the light that transformed the universe into the one that we have today. But let's talk a little bit more about this because it's a relatively complex study and welcome to What The Math. So to try to understand what exactly this cosmic makeover represents, we need to go back in time roughly around um, 13 billion years ago. And if we try to do this visually, you're going from somewhere right here on a time scale all the way back when the universe was much smaller and a much different place. So roughly around 380,000 years after the beginning of the universe, basically this right here, there was a period known as the Cosmic Dark Ages. And that's basically because none of the light could easily go through the universe, because the actual um, composition of the universe was this very thick neutral hydrogen gas that was very very difficult to see through. In other words, it was very very foggy everywhere in the universe for millions and millions of years. And this illustration from University of Cambridge explains this pretty well. So right here, around 380,000 years ago, suddenly all of the hydrogen became neutral, creating this very thick gas-like formation across everywhere in space. And the light didn't really travel that well through it, mostly because the entire universe was basically covered in this very thick fog. And all of this lasted for at least a few hundred million years until the appearance of first stars. And the main reason why the Dark Ages have disappeared after the appearance of the first stars is because as soon as the stars started to appear, and all of these stars were extremely massive, uh, first generation stars that actually don't exist anywhere in the universe anymore, all of these stars started to produce so much ionizing radiation that it started to ionize the hydrogen around it. Or more simply, all of this gas surrounding the stars started to acquire charge and as it did so, it changed the hydrogen from being very opaque and impossible to see through into hydrogen that was see-through, so the light could now suddenly travel through it. Here's a beautiful simulation from NASA that kind of simulates this visually. Notice how every single spot here is the location of a new star or a new galaxy forming where suddenly this light from these stars starts to kind of change the environment around them. And as this happens, the neutral hydrogen starts becoming more um, transparent and so light can now travel through it and then eventually all of the light transforms the rest of the universe making it basically transparent as it is today. But prior to this, it was very difficult for us to see anything. And so this reionization period is very important for um, modern astronomers because this is the only way we can see um, really really far away into the night skies and to try to establish what really happened early in the universe. And following the reionization, this is kind of what the universe early on looked like. Every single spot here is a new galaxy with a lot of stars growing in size and also creating a lot of new stars in the process. But this period took at least 600 million years. And basically, right here was always a mystery to us. We never really thought that we we're going to be able to find something to actually physically prove this. Because until recently, this was all theoretical. We kind of thought so, but we weren't really sure. And then, an international team of scientists using NASA telescopes and using a lot of other tools were able to discover something that we always believed was true and now we know is true. They've discovered the first formation of these reionized bubbles by the newly formed galaxies and specifically here they refer to this as a cluster known as EGS 77. This galactic group is not only the earliest galactic group we've ever seen but on top of that it's also the farthest galactic group we've seen so far but most importantly, it allows us to finally prove as a fact that reionization did happen and it kind of looked similar to what you see right here on the screen. So essentially this represents three different groups of galaxies with the large bubbles of reionized hydrogen that are roughly around 2.2 million light years across with the galaxy being right here in the middle. And all of this was relatively recently discovered by looking at the constellation Butes, which some of you might already know because that's where the famous Butes void is located. And so by looking here and essentially seeing roughly around 50,000 different galaxies and using the Kitt Peak National Observatory that you see on the screen, 
the scientists identified three different galactic sectors that definitely were much, much older than anything else. Now, how they did this is actually really original. So, for all the galaxies they've seen, you could technically see them in visual light. But this is not good enough for us to prove that it's something that's really far away. They had to look for something that's in infrared light, something that was extremely far away and very, very redshifted. And on top of this, they were looking at very specific light known as Lyman Alpha Radiation or Lyman Alpha Light. Simply, it's the light that's created when the hydrogen is reionized, when it actually acquires charge. This alpha light always has the same wavelength of 121.6 nanometers. And when the first galaxies formed, some of this light was emitted, then absorbed and re-emitted again, creating these large ionized bubbles that the scientists just recently discovered. But in order to prove that these galaxies were truly far away and that the Lyman light was coming from reionization early on in the universe, they had to make sure that the light was highly redshifted. And this is exactly what they discovered in these three galaxies in the sector known as EGS-77. And what's even more interesting is that these bubbles that were detected in these uh, galaxies are actually large enough to overlap and it also seems that the Lyman alpha light that came from the center of all of these galaxies traveled and got redshifted before it ever reached the neutral hydrogen that would absorb it otherwise. In other words, the light as it traveled away from these galaxies was sort of always behind the ever-expanding bubbles and eventually the bubbles combined and the light could easily pass through the rest of the universe. And as of today, this is the best evidence we have for the so-called reionization epoch and of course the dark ages as well. But more importantly, we finally identified a galaxy that's extremely, extremely far away and something that we'll definitely be able to study even more in the future. And even though this is the first direct evidence of this theoretical concept, in the next uh, few years, once the James Webb telescope becomes operational, it's going to be able to detect even more of these galaxies because some of the instrumentation is going to be able to easily detect the so-called Lyman Alpha radiation and allow us to see even more of these first stars and first galaxies in the universe. So thanks to all of the instrumentation that has improved over the years, we're now going to be answering some of the most fundamental questions of the creation of the universe and hopefully understand what all of this means and where all of this is going. But for now, that's really it. Once we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. For now, check out the study in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. And I'll see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye-bye.